Hey guys, it's Maddie, and today we are bringing you a brand new series called Big Questions About Big Rigs, where we will answer some of the biggest, most burning questions about all types of trucks, as well as the industry in general. Following our first episode, All About Cab Overs, we figured we would feature another pressing topic in trucking, Peterbilt versus Kenworth. What's the difference? But before we get started... This video is made possible by our online chrome shop, jackschromeshop.com. Be sure to stop by the site and sweep through our selection of sales, including 10% off bumpers, visors, exhaust, steering wheels, and so much more. And remember folks, if your rig don't shine, you don't know Jack. When it comes to the top tier tried and true truck brands in the industry, there are really only two companies considered as contenders, Kenworth and Peterbilt. As far as quality class eight trucks go, these two companies take the cake for building better, more durable big rigs with a world renowned reputation for rugged reliability. But as many of you might already know, the power couple of truck companies industry icons Peterbilt and Kenworth are both owned and operated by Packar, previously known as the Pacific Car and Foundry Company, which have left many wondering, well, then what is the difference between Peterbilt and Kenworth? And while the sister subsidiaries do definitely share some similarities, there are also a couple noteworthy comparisons between the companies and their trucks that set the semis apart. For instance, Peterbilt has long been prized for producing incredibly innovative, immaculate interiors with countless improvements catered towards the comfort of the trucker. Whereas the Kenworth company is known for creating narrower, aerodynamically advanced cabs and sleepers with smaller interior spaces, allowing for much easier maneuverability. In addition to drastic differences in interiors, Kenworth trucks are also considerably cheaper in cost up front, while still focusing on creating a high quality truck, whereas Peterbilt's are pricier to begin with, yet earn an excellent resale value, placing their primary focus on minimizing fuel costs. However, despite their differences, some have still insisted that the cousin companies are essentially just carbon copies of the same semi-tractor. So, in order to clear the air between the companies, it only seems fair to begin with a brief backstory of each brand in order to bring you up to date with the history of how things happened for each of the major truck manufacturers. Starting us off, the Kenworth company kicked things off early on in the game in 1912, with two brothers, who like many others at the time, began building cars eventually creating the company called Gerlinger Motor Car Works. Gerlinger would go on to produce the great gasoline-powered Ger 6 that was launched largely for logging and other laborious trucking tasks. Custom creations quickly became Kenworth's hallmark, allowing the company to capture the coastal truck market near their home in Tacoma, Washington. Jumping ahead to 1933, Kenworth would truly take the industry by storm by being the first American truck manufacturer to install diesel engines as standard equipment. The innovation only continued in 1936 with the introduction of the industry's first sleeper cab. As the Second World War came to its close in 1945, the Kenworth Company was purchased by the then Pacific Car and Foundry Company, now known today as Packar. Peterbilt, on the other hand, launched a lot later on in 1939, also ironically in Tacoma, Washington, with a man by the name of T.A. Peterman. After years in the logging industry spent looking for the perfect truck, Peterman decided to take matters into his own hands and produce his own trucks after purchasing a plethora of pieces and parts from the long forgotten Fagel Motors Manufacturing Company. Peterman's past of rebuilding and putting together surplus military models, paired with his ability to create custom chassis, made for a perfect combination 
and ultimately led to the creation of the popular company we know today as Peterbilt. Skipping to the 1950s decade, Peterbilt would launch their iconic red oval logo, as well as pump out some of their most popular models ever, including their beloved Model 350 bubble nose in 1950, and the narrow or needle nose Model 351 in 1954. Four years following the release of these renowned rigs, Peterbilt was purchased by the Pacific Car and Foundry Company. Now that you know the history, here's where things start to get a little sticky. Obviously, Kenworth opened up their operations over 25 years prior to the production of the first Peterbilt. With that being said, many people have petitioned that Peterbilt completely copied the Kenworth company, and after the pair were both purchased by Packard, the sister subsidiaries would continue to willingly follow in each other's footsteps for years to come. The beginning of this race between big rigs started off shortly after Kenworth was captured by the Pacific Car and Foundry Company, with the release of the 500 series bullnose semis in 1948, followed by the Model 350 bubble nose trucks we talked about before, two years later in 1950. The sister subsidiaries soon saw a slight shift or role reversal resulting in Peterbilt producing their extremely popular Cab Over Model 352 in 1959, followed by the famous Kenworth K100 Cab Over, launching a little later on in 1963. Although Peterbilt packed the first punch when it came to Cab Overs, Kenworth would absolutely kill the conventional configuration game in 1961 with the release of their legendary W900 rig. The wildly successful W900 would introduce all kinds of innovative ideas to the industry. And before Peterbilt could come up with a counter-conventional to produce, Kenworth continued to crush their competitors with another all-new adaption of the wonderful W900 in 1967 with the W900A. After the W900A was announced, Peterbilt quickly played catch-up and would quickly put their popular 359 model into production the very same year. Coming back to cab overs, Kenworth would come out with two updates to their K100 truck, the K100C in 1968, and eventually the K100E in 1983. Close on the curtails of Kenworth's K100 cab overs were the newly produced Peterbilts, with the Model 362 made in 1981, in the Model 372 in 1988. The next notable pair of new, strikingly similar models also made their way onto the market starting in the 80s, with the beloved W900B in 1982, followed by the fan favorite Peterbilt conventional truck, the 379, created in 1987. The companies continued to market more aerodynamically advanced adaptions as we moved into the late 80s and 90s, with Kenworth taking on a totally new line of trucks throughout the mid 80s with the T600 and T800 trucks. Meanwhile, Kenworth would also make their most memorable model ever with the legendary launch of the W900L in 1990. More than 10 plus years would pass before Peterbilt's all new aero trucks became available with the Model 387 moving on to the market in 1998 and the later Model 386 launching in 2005. Peterbilt also finally found the perfect freight hauler to compete with Kenworth's classic W900L model in 2006 when they launched their latest long nose, the 389. The next year in 2007, Kenworth came out with the next all new addition to their aero line, with the T660 truck. This time, only three years later in 2010, Peterbilt pumped their prized new Model 587 out of production on the trails of the T660 truck. 2012 proved to be a colossal year for both the Peterbilt and Kenworth companies, as they both created another couple of aerodynamically advanced semi-tractors, with the Peterbilt Model 579 and the Kenworth T680 truck. Both companies continued to carry on this success with another subsequent set of all-new aero trucks, 
after launching the Peterbilt Model 567 and the later Kenworth T880 truck in 2013. After years of playing catch up with Kenworth, Peterbilt had finally found their footing producing the equally popular counterparts to their cousin Kenworth Company's trucks. However, Kenworth couldn't stay quiet for long, and later in 2018, the company launched their most controversial conventional cab ever created, the W990. After the Kenworth W990 was created, the ball was bounced back into Peterbilt's court to produce the next new trucking novelty. Skipping ahead to the present day in 2020, no brand new Peterbilts have been pumped out of production yet. Although continuous chit chat concerning the likely launch of a new long nose model being made by Peterbilt to replace the 389 rig has resonated through the trucking community for quite some time. Despite sharing some similarities, including the same parent company, Peterbilt and Kenworth have both distinguished their brands by bringing a variety of vehicles to the table, built to take on a ton of tasks within a wide range of rigs. Between both brands, there is a truck for almost any task in any trucker, depending on the driver's wants and needs. So next time you're asked the age-old question, and it comes down to the decision between Peterbilt versus Kenworth, be sure to ask yourself a few questions. What kind of freight are you hauling? How far are you hauling it? And perhaps most importantly, which rig do you personally prefer? Because when it comes to quality big rigs, both the Peterbilt and Kenworth brands have got your back. Thank you guys so much for watching our brand new Big Questions About Big Rigs series. Before you leave, make sure you like the video, check out the other videos on our channel, and subscribe. We have finally reached our goal of 25k subscribers, so thank you all so much for your support for the show. Next stop, 50k. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything else you'd like to talk to us about, please be sure to tune in to our live podcast, The Chrome Corner, Wednesdays at 12 p.m. noon Eastern Standard Time, and join Maddie and Dave as they answer viewers' questions and discuss all things Chrome. If you'd like to stay up to date with the new projects we have coming, please follow us at Jack's Chrome Show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Be sure to buy your big rig the best chrome for your home with some sweet stainless sales on our website at jackschromeshop.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. And remember guys, if your rig don't shine, you don't know Jack. Mm -hmm.